you, you're a man who's been observing what's been going on in, in Christianity in New Zealand for a, a, a lot of years. Yes, yes. Yeah, and, and, and when people look back, they often sort of start with the treaty when we're looking at New Zealand race relations yes. and yes. colonisation, but my understanding is that things for New Zealand began a lot earlier than that. Yes, they did. Uh, really, as far as the uh, European contact goes, they go back to 1814, of course, when the missionaries came here, and uh, the missionaries have not been given real credit, I think, in uh, history books. Uh, because before 1840, uh, the Maoris, most tribes had accepted the gospel and had ceased to fight. In spite of the fact that they had the massacre wars, the missionaries had gone uh, ahead of them to get in between the tribes and stop them from fighting. So it took them about 26 years do that, because there were still some tribes in 1840 that weren't quite pacified. But that was a remarkable thing to do, to stop a whole country, all the tribes, from massacring each other. And they had imagined, the Maori imagined that all the British were going to be like the missionaries. And so they were very confused when a lot of settlers and some governors came in who were not believers, and they came in with a different attitude. The Waitangi Treaty, of course, was uh, formed by the, or commissioned by the colonial office in, in, in England, in which a man named Stevens was very uh, prominent. And he was one of the sons of one of the Clapton sect, and a born again Christian. Uh, so that the Waitangi Treaty was based on Christian ethic. But when a lot of people came who were not a, a, a part or agreeable with the new ethic, because in the past, the British had gone in to America, Africa, China, virtually to rape that country. And the huge estates that were in England were built on the profits made from these countries. And, and the slave trade and the was slave part trade, of that too. The slave trade was part of that, Bristol. Uh, but now Stevens and the new people said, we've got to change that. And New Zealand was the first to benefit from that. I mean, some of the, 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 the Māori had been picked up by whalers and trading right. ships and, and right. turned into slaves already by that stage, hadn't oh, they? Oh, yes, they had. Uh, and what they had done, they had found that, that the tattooed heads were good currency. And so they would tattoo their, tra their slaves and then kill them for the heads and sell the heads. <laughs> But uh, the new attitude in, in England was helped. It helped the Maoris to have the missionaries there. And so when the, the treaty came along, they understood, the Maoris understood, this is, part, this is what the British are like, this is what the English are like. So but there was some kind of confidence that there was right. that they were interested in the welfare of, of, of the Maori the people That's because right. of because of those early missionaries. That's right. They were so different from the whalers and, and the traders that they had confidence. Here we have a people that we can we can uh, rely on and deal with. The the treaty. What was it intended to be? What was the intention there? The intention was to give the indigenous people, the natives of New Zealand equal citizenship with the settlers so that there would be one nation under the reign of the queen equality and the 
Maori's ownership of land would be protected. They willingly sold great tracts of land, particularly the Auckland central city area, was willingly sold by the Ngāti Patra. But the treaty ensured them that they only should part with the land if it was their will to do so. That was the purpose of the treaty. So the first right of purchase, wasn't it, yes. was, was given to the Māori, uh, to the Crown. Yes. Now, if anybody was going to sell land... That's right. Yes, that's right. That's uh, the, the, a Crown representative had yes, the first right. option. But that was kind of misused, wasn't it? Oh, by, by the settlers and the government, yes, they did. They, they just went into it. And they made all sorts of excuses. And they said, these Māoris are rebellious, so we better go in and quell this rebellion. And what they were doing was pro protesting that the treaty was not being honoured. Neither was it. So that they confiscated land instead of buying it. And that was what the land wars were all about. So when Māori didn't concede to the conditions that were being offered, it was yes. taken by force. Yes, that's right. Now, underlying this is this premise that this is somehow um, a, a, a treaty that involves the Christian God, that, this, yes. that so, somehow God's involved in this. Yes, yes, it, it, it was. The principles of which the pre treaty was constructed were the principles of every man is made in the image of God and therefore must be treated with respect and given equality. And they, within, within Māori then, that idea of equality was, was quite new, wasn't it? Yes, yes it was, because up till then uh, they possessed by conquest the Northern Maoris came down and and massacred the tribes down here. At, at one stage, the Tamaki Makarau Isthmus, which is Auckland Isthmus, was highly populated, as can be seen on every mountain around Auckland. The remains of large populations, but they were killed and destroyed long before 1840. And the Maoris then possessed by conquest, by right of conquest. But this treaty brought in a whole new concept of rights, and that is being fought out today under the Waitangi Tribune. What did it really mean? And if we're going to understand the treaty correctly, we've got to go back to its Christian roots. The Maoris had no difficulty at all in believing in the supernatural. The difficulty came as far as New Zealand's come, when a whole lot of settlers and academics and government people came in with the Enlightenment viewpoint that there is no God, and they became completely confused. They put trust in this great English, that they welcomed the English. Nati Patra here in Auckland encouraged them to come. They, they pleaded them to come and settle in Auckland here because they trusted in this, these people who had a Christian viewpoint. Then when others came in and they confiscated the land, they were completely confused. They couldn't understand. Uh, and, and so the, the revival, which had happened before 1840, lasted right up to the late, uh, up to the, the, to the land wars, really. And then a whole lot of people, the Maori people, just uh, said, oh, we can't understand what's going on here. It's just too confusing. And that treaty must have appeared to have been something of a lie. Yes, yes, that's right. And when the Maoris, when the missionaries were friendly with the new people, they said, well, 
Who are you working for? Are you working for us or are you working for these guys? And they were confused, probably confused. And so I think the missionaries, to some degree, were probably confused too that yes. they weren't getting the support for what they had been promised would be a, a situation where the rights of both parties would be respected through the treaty. That's right. That's right. And there were some deals that the missionaries did, uh, the, what they call the Fairburn block out of Cleveland Way, uh, one of the missionaries, Fairburn, bought this block to protect it, the Maoris. But along came the settlers and said, oh, you missionaries are buying up this land. You know, and so there's all that confusion. There's, there's a lot of talk today, particularly amongst Maoris, where the missionaries are blamed That's for right. smoothing the way for the land grabbers, exactly. perhaps for the settler government or for the New Zealand company. Exactly. Or, That's right. Yeah, they, they looked upon as traitors. Is it all, I mean, is there some truth in that? We're all human, even though we're missionaries. We're all human. And it would be stupid to say that they were perfect. They most likely made mistakes. Missionaries are making mistakes today, so they made mistakes then. But taken overall, I don't think the missionaries are given enough credit for the good that they did. For so, what would be the prime good that they did in those early days then? The prime good was that they uh, they taught that God. The, the Maoris believed in Eo, I O, Eo, the Supreme God. And they taught the Maoris that their Eo was the same God that sent Jesus Christ. And that transformed the whole attitude of the Maori race. So they worked from within the existing cultural understanding? Yes. From within the existing Maori traditions, there were people such as at Tanahaki that understood the gospel of Jesus Christ better than the col colonialists. They said, we will not fight, you know, in Taranaki there. The people in that tribe, as soon as the surveyors came in to compensate, they banned that pull out the pigs. And in the end, the police came on the, on the Sunday, the Tarahaki people. Tarahaka. Mm -hmm. Tarahaka. Mm. Very hard people. They welcomed the men. And then the police just destroyed their houses. It was the worst thing that ever happened in, in the history of New Zealand. And this was, according to the, the Maoris, this is the British people that we are trusting because of their, their Christian beliefs. It must have been extremely uh, confusing to, to yes. And distortions had taken place on both sides. The English had distorted history. The history I was taught in school was that these naughty Maoris were rebellious, therefore we had to go in and quell them and, and take the land. You know. Now, the Maoris had a very different attitude to that, and the truth needs to be sorted out and made public and declared. Uh, and I think that King has done more uh, uh, to help uh, Michael King has done more to help in discovering the truth than others have. Uh, Bellish is very uh, dismissive of the missionaries and he rubbishes them. I don't think he's fair. But somebody needs to come in and, and do a uh, well, do definitive work 